be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who has caused this holy night to shine with an illumination of the true light, grant us, we beseech thee, that as we have known the mystery of that light upon earth, so may we also perfectly enjoy him in heaven, where with thee and the Holy Ghost he liveth and reigneth, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. 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 Please be seated to receive the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness see a bright light. Light shines on those who live in a land of deep darkness. You have enlarged the nation. You give them great joy. They rejoice in your presence as harvesters rejoice, as warriors celebrate when they divide up the plunder. For their oppressive yoke and the club that strikes their shoulders, the cudgel that the oppressor uses on them, you have shattered as in the day of Midian's defeat. Indeed, every boot that marches and shakes the earth and every garment dragged through blood is used as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son has been given to us, his shoulders responsibility, and is called Extraordinary Strategist, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His dominion will be vast, and he will bring immeasurable prosperity. He will rule on David's throne and over David's kingdom, establishing it and strengthening it by promoting justice and fairness from this time forward and forevermore. The Lord's intense devotion to his people will accomplish this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will pray the psalm responsibly by whole verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and great is his praise. He is more to be feared than the wild ones. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. O Lord, and his magnificence of his presence. Although our Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. For the offerings that come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble 
before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder, and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with his truth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. It trains us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, as we wait for the happy fulfillment of our hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us to set us free from every kind of lawlessness and to purify for himself a people who are truly his, who are eager to do good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, I bid your blessing. The Lord be in your mind and on your lips and in your heart, that you may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus to register all the empire for taxes. This was the first registration taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the family and family line of David. He went to be registered with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds nearby, living out in the field, keeping guard over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all the people. Today your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a vast heavenly army appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among people with whom he is pleased. When the angels left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem 
and see this thing that has taken place, that the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and located Mary and Joseph and found the baby lying in a manger. When they saw him, they related what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were astonished at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured up all these words, pondering in her heart what they might mean. So the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything was just as they had been told. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a seat. This first Mass of Christmas is known as the Shepherd's Mass because it, it focuses on the annunciation of, of the birth of Jesus to the shepherds. So I would like to ask you, if you would, to travel with me to Bethlehem, uh, to those wide open fields outside the, uh, the city, to the, uh, the meadows and, and the, the pasture land, full of flocks of sheep, all being tended by shepherds. And it is, of course, nighttime. It is dark. They're there even in the darkest hour of night, and they're there at the darkest season of the year, which this year happens to be tax season in Judea because of uh, Augustus and his decree. But if the weather is good and there are no predators uh, bothering the sheep, then being a shepherd at night with a flock of, of drowsy, sleepy sheep who aren't really inclined to go anywhere in the dark can be pretty boring. So the shepherds get up to all kinds of other things. Some of them are counting their sheep. Some of them are dozing off because they've been counting their sheep. Some are filling out their tax returns. Some are passing around a wine skin. A few are probably watching a movie or something on their cell phones. And it's not unrealistic to think that at some point or other somebody gets up and goes to use the latrine. And in the middle of all of this, you've got to understand, this is an ordinary night. Nobody sees what's coming. This is an ordinary night for them. This is business as usual. It's a night like any other night. There's nothing special about it. And in the middle of all of this, going about their ordinary shepherd business, in the middle of the night, they are suddenly and rudely interrupted by an angel who shows up with major floodlights of the Lord's glory. This is sure to terrify them. It certainly embarrasses the guy using the latrine. And the rest of them are really terrified. So this has never happened before. It's never happened to anybody they know. And now here it is happening to them. And it is not an entirely welcome thing to happen. Because you've got to understand that angels, angels are not the kind of meek, uh, demure, insubstantial beings that we think of them as. Angels are imposing figures, they're powerful, they're authoritative. And even if they're announcing great joy, they can be rather intimidating figures. So as always, this angel has to begin, as all angels do, by saying, do not be afraid, don't panic. And to their credit, the shepherds manage it. They at least manage to control their, their most immediate and most uh, violent ref reflexes, their instincts, and they manage to, to stand still and to listen long enough to hear what the angel has to say to finish the message. That the Savior, the name Jesus means God saves, the Savior is born, the anointed one, the one anointed by God, the, the word Christos from which we get Christ, the word Mashiach, in Hebrew, from which we get Messiah, they're all words that mean anointed, identified, marked out. The one foretold by the prophets is born in Bethlehem. And at this point, if you're a shepherd, I think you're probably thinking, okay, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. 
but no sooner do they think that the show is over, that they can go back to doing whatever it was that they were doing before they were so rudely interrupted, then they find that they have to sit through a performance of the first ever visitation of carolers. But once that's over, then they have a choice of what to do. Now, you and I know, at some level we know this, that this could happen to us as well. It's been prophesied. We've been warned. We've been told this can happen. We shouldn't be surprised when it happens. Matter of fact, people have told me, oh, I would love to have that happen to me. I'd love to have an angel show up and the glory of the Lord shine. And I would welcome that. Well, I kind of have my doubts, actually, because the problem is not really that it happens. The problem is when it happens. Just when you think you've got time to spare. Just when you have a million other things to do and they're all more important and they're all critical and they're, they're all probably more fun. Just when he's running late is starting to feel like he's never coming. Just when you think to yourself, it can't happen here, so it's safe for me to go make a trip to the bathroom. Wham, boom, angel, bright lights, loud voices, unbearably festive and unbearably frightful all at the same time. Nobody sees it coming. You can't control the timing. Even Jesus doesn't know the day or the hour. We can't control that part of it. But we can. We can. Even if only just barely, and by the grace of God, we can control our reaction. We can restrain ourselves. We can hold back our impulses, our reflexes. We can curb our annoyance or our embarrassment or our fear just long enough, maybe, to hear just what is this message the angel is delivering. And we might just hear something fuller and richer than we ever expected to hear. Imagine what a difference it would make to you to know that when the angel says the Savior is born, that the word Savior doesn't just simply mean he's gonna get your charges dropped at the last judgment. It doesn't just mean he's gonna get you into heaven one of these days. It doesn't just mean he's gonna make you prosperous, rich, or cure your ills. He might do some of that, he might do all of that, but there's even more to it. He will lead you down a path where you will find wholeness within yourself, where you will find reconciliation with those from whom you are estranged. You'll find reconciliation with your worst enemies. You'll have a whole new level of intimacy with God, and all of that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface. That's good news. But then, of course, the angels go away. The angels are taken back up into heaven. The sky gets dark again. Now the shepherds could, if they wanted to, just shrug their shoulders and say, oh, well, that was fun, and then go back to doing whatever it was they were doing before they were so rudely interrupted. But they don't. They take the angel at his word. They check it out. They hike over to Bethlehem, and they wander around town babbling about visions of angels and heavenly choirs and asking about a newborn baby, a very specific newborn baby. And everybody they talk to is astonished to hear what they're saying. And then they actually find him. And on the way back, they praise and glorify God for everything that they have heard and seen because it did turn out exactly everything just the way they were told. I'm sure the shepherds don't forget this night, ever. It's kind of hard to unsee an angel. Some of them may wish they would never have another experience like it ever again. Some of them may be trying to forget. But my guess is that most of them treasure the experience, even if they have to ponder it like Mary for a long time. And for some of them, that's all it is. It fades into being a pleasant memory and an inspiring but not particularly compelling anecdote. 
Maybe they come back every year to, to try to recapture, to relive the excitement. But a year's a long time. And in the, the months between visits, that memory loses some of its immediacy, some of its, its raw power, some of its ability to, to keep us open to the possibility that something like that could happen again, to keep open to the possibility of grace, open to the possibility of being filled with joy and wonder that we can't understand or describe, and we certainly don't expect. There are others who don't just recall the baby, they come to find that the baby calls them, and they keep coming back, some weekly, some even nightly. But the more they see, and the more they learn, and the more they know, the more they want to know, and the more they want to see, and the more they decide that they don't just want to know as an intellectual exercise, they want him. And they pursue him, and they follow him as he grows and matures, as he becomes a child sitting in the temple courts instructing the, the experienced, aged scripture scholars, and they're amazed at his insights and his wisdom and his learning. They follow him from Bethlehem to Egypt to Nazareth to Capernaum to the Sea of Galilee, and they see him walk on water and calm storms and heal the sick and cleanse lepers, and cast out demons, and raise the dead. And they follow him because they have had a little bit of a taste of something, and they can't let go of it. Because they have tasted how much more there is to life than just counting sheep, and filling out tax returns, and passing around the wineskin. And it all starts with that rude interruption by an angel and that just tiny little bit of self-control just long enough so the angel can welcome them to eavesdrop on the courts of heaven there's no separating the birth of jesus from the rest of jesus from the rest of his life from the rest of his mission and his ministry from the mission and ministry of the church the unwelcome angel is the beginning of the story, not the end. And if you don't know that we are already somewhere halfway into the middle of it, that's okay because there's time to catch up. This is the shepherd's mass, but it can be yours as well. This is their first mass, but it is not the last. The angel may not be welcome, but you are. You're welcome to join us tonight. You're welcome to join us weekly. You're welcome to join us daily if you want, as we watch to see and hear the story and how it unfolds right here in the middle of Kinderhook in the year 2021 and almost 2022. And here you can learn that new way of living, that new kind of life. Here you can learn how to be patient enough to sit through the visitations of unwelcome angels who will interrupt whatever you're doing and dare you to drop what you're doing and go find the Savior, God's Son, born of Mary, the beginning and the middle and the end of your life and my life and all life. Glory to God in the highest and peace to those of goodwill, even now on the earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to stand and to join us in professing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of, earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of God made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us, and was crucified. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended and ascended to heaven, and on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom is the high of our And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together were his worship to the glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with the Lord's spirit. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all.
be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden. It is very meet and right to glorify thee, Father, and to give thee thanks. For thou alone art God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, thou hast made all things and filled them with thy blessing to rejoice in the splendor of thy radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before thee to serve thee night and day, and beholding the glory of thy presence, they offer thee unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim thee and glorify thy name as we say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve you, all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that, in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, he destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, O Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Francis, Bishop and Pope of Rome, Bartholomew, Patriarch of Constantinople, Michael, Presiding Bishop, Michael, our Assisting Bishop, the Rector and Deacon of this church, our associated clergy, 
and all who minister to your church. Remember all your people and all who seek your truth, especially those who have asked for our prayers and for whom we pray, especially Lynn, Francis, Patricia, Jennifer, Dawn, Ava, Logan, Mary, Gabriella, Danielle, Brian, Anna, Brendan, John, Cindy, Abigail, Tonya, and Jay. Visit them and relieve them in distress, defend them in danger, and shelter them in rejoicing. Be mindful, O Lord, of all who celebrate milestones this week, especially Lisa DiMeno, Rosemary Palmquist, Merle Smith, Joan Yannicone, Jennifer Moore, Emma Kleppheis, Bonnie Holly, and all those whose birthdays and anniversaries are unknown to us. Remember all who have died in the peace of your Christ, and especially Jean Akers, Patrick Daria, Arthur Lewiston, Hazel Cherry, Paul Delecchio, Mary Nagley, Rob Soley, Stanley Allen, George Hansen, Frank Summer Jr., Ada Ginsberg, Sybil Moore, Fred Schieber, Catherine Summer, Helen Callan, and Mary Debbie Saxinger, and all those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the light of, into the place of eternal joy and light. Comfort and console those who mourn them. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Paul, St. Benedict, St. Stephen, St. John, the Holy Innocents, St. Thomas of Becket, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ, and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, forever and forever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast of peace. Hallelujah. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this, thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he knows. The gifts of God for the people of God. And if you are joining us through the video recording of this Mass, I invite you to, to join now in the act of spiritual communion. I believe in you, Lord Jesus, present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I long to receive you into my soul. Though I cannot now receive you in the sacrament, I pray you to come nonetheless into my heart. I embrace you and I unite myself to you, for you are already within me as I am in you. Let me never be separated from you.
message to us, we beseech thee, O Lord, that we who rejoice in celebrating by these mysteries the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, may by worthy lives deserve to attain unto fellowship with him, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. tonight. Um, just a reminder, however, that uh, because this is Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, happening in quick succession here, uh, we will not have a Christmas Day Mass tomorrow. Um, but we will be back on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, so uh, feel free to come and worship with us then. That's the first Sunday after Christmas, so we're, we're already moving into the, the 12 days, and I hope they are as, as merry for you as they possibly can be, and that everyone is safe and healthy and happy. Uh, and blessed during this time. I do want to say thank you again to all the very many people who uh, work so hard to, uh, to make these celebrations happen. Some who work uh, uh, double time. Uh, I know our musicians have been here. They, they were here at four this afternoon and, um, and they're back here now. We've got some uh, folks decorating the altar guild has, uh, has helped to green the church beautifully. We have a brand new crush a nativity set that's been donated to us. We have a new outdoor nativity set that Don has given us that Karen and Bernie set up. Uh, we have Dave who does our videotaping so faithfully every week. Um, and, and servers and deacons, Rick and Mike, uh, everybody just so so faithful and, and it just enables us to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So I want to just thank you all and I know I've forgotten people and uh, I don't mean to do that but it's just this is a cast of thousands, and there's, there's, there's no one doing this, right? It takes, a, it takes a village, it takes a parish to worship the Lord. So uh, thank you all for doing that, and, and do keep coming back. But now please stand and pray for a blessing. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, 
was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.